what happens when we become very happy or very sad. Uh, these tears are tears that reflect an image of, of a hormonal response to your body's ability to say, and, and they do two things mainly. One thing, they allow you to, to express stress hormones from your body, and secondarily, they let others know that maybe right now I need some help. Three types of tears. We all have cried. We all have had those moments that have made us tear up and cry because of hurts and pains and trauma. But what is it that makes God cry? You, you cry when your feelings are hurt. You cry when someone has not understood you properly. You cry when things go off in your life. What is it that makes God cry? Because whatever it is that makes God cry, if you love the Lord, it should make you cry. If God is your fault, then what bothers him should bother you. And if for some reason what bothers him does not bother you, it suggests the idea that maybe you ought to realign and reassess your connection with God. Because whatever makes him cry ought to do the same thing that makes you cry. There are three occasions in Scripture when Jesus cries. Three occasions. And whatever it was that broke his heart ought to break our heart. He didn't cry basal tears in the scripture. He didn't cry reflex tears. He cried emotional tears. And those are the tears that connect sometimes to your sense of loss, your sense of pain, or sometimes even your sense of helplessness or hopelessness, the sense that there's nothing I can do about a situation. There are tears that come because somehow I feel a sense of pain and hopelessness or helplessness in a situation. Looking at these three occasions inside this text in the, in the, the Word of God is going to be yours on this, uh, on this evening. The first one we find, we all know about in John chapter 11. The Bible says, when Jesus saw her weeping, verse 33, and the Jews who had come along after Lazarus had died, with her also weeping, he was deeply moved by those words, in spirit and in trouble. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, he replied. And verse 35 says, Jesus wept. The one passage that all of you have memorized is this one verse here. <laughs> Jesus wept. Jesus was close to Lazarus and Mary and Martha, a family communal relationship they shared with each other. He's away and aware of the, of the pending health condition of last and decides to lay his presence coming to help. Matter of fact, he, he got there so late, he got there after the funeral was actually over. He missed the sickness and all the chance, and, and when he arrived there, we all know what happens. Martha talks to him before she comes and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But she has an accusatory type of tone in talking to him. He tells him, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. She didn't get the point, but she understood who he and walked away. But there was something always different about the relationship between Mary and Jesus. Actually, when you study the three of them in the family, you find that, that Mary is the one who always seems to be listening for a chance to learn more. I see her as more connected to the, the, the importance of connecting and understanding what the Lord is trying to say. She comes to him and says, Father, she says, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have. There's something about the way she talked to him that moves him differently. The text says, Jesus wept. The Greek word for wept here is a word that is only used once in Scripture. Only used this one time in Scripture. It identifies that he, he teared up and began to cry. But there's more in the text that suggests how he responded to just that one word. The passage says the idea, it says he was deeply moved. The word deeply moved in the Greek actually the word for how horses will snort. It suggests that he was, when she came to him and said to him, my brother, if you had been here, you would not have died. When she came to him, the Bible suggests the idea, he sort of snorted when he cried. Sort of in his tears. And the text says he was troubled. <coughs> troubled. The word here for trouble has the idea of being confused or, or disoriented or agitated. Jesus is agitated, disoriented, confused, and crying because Mary says, my brother has died. He's not crying because Lazarus has died. He's there to raise Lazarus. Right. He's crying because he's aware, first of all, he's 
responding to the connection of it's an emotional connection to our pain. Understand this, if you're never going to be the people in the church that God has called you to be, when others are hurting, it should break your heart. If somebody stands there asking for prayer, you should cry with them if they're crying. The child of God connects with those who are in the family of God. When the city you're living in is hurting, it should break your heart. When folk are dying for the wrong reason, it should bother you. If you He 
was, he was crying because of the pain and the fact of death. The second occasion in scripture that you find the Lord crying, actually, in the book of Hebrews, in the text says in the fifth chapter here, the words, beginning in verse number seven. <clears throat> the writer says, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions and fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And it was heard because of his reverent submission. That's what Riddick saying. This is the three kinds of prayers, each one more lofty than the last one. There's a traditional prayer, which you said it will say in silence. Secondly, there was a crying prayer, which was a raising of a voice when one prayed. And the highest, loftiest kind of a prayer was said to be the prayers that came with tears. Because they would say that tears overcome all of the most lofty things. There is no door, they would say, there's no door that tears can't get through. In Hebrews 5, most would suggest that Jesus is praying, he's asking the Father to save him. And if you see in the movie The Passion of the Christ, you can think it's about, he sees the priest concerned about how he's going to be beaten. He's concerned about how they're going to whip him in the pain. The physical pain, and often we talk about the passion of the Lord, and we talk about what he went through, and we talk about uh, uh, the suffering experience, and we look at it from the perspective, oh, well, look at the crown of the thorns on his head, oh, look how bad they beat him. That's not what made him cry. He cried because he was aware, if I do this, if I carry the sin of the world for the first time in the creation, for the first time in the existence of deity, a break is going to come in the context of the Godhead. The bond and relation that the, the Yahweh and the Logos have had with each other is going to be broken. I'm going to break my bond with the Father and the Spirit and the experience that I'm afraid of the pain I'm not going to Does it break your heart? When things in your life keep you from God. Yes. But the God, I am not the kind of sinner. I declare, praise the Lord, I am like these other sinners. I will do you the wrong. I ain't no murderer. I'm not a killer. I've done nothing wrong. Praise be to God. I am about as good as you're going to get to get to heaven. Matter of fact, I don't know. Matter of fact, you can have some of my books. I won't be proud of you.
an embankment against you, encircle you, and hem you in on every side. They will, he says, dash you to the ground. And the children within your walls, in your walls, they will not leave one stone upon another. Because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. The traveling for the past Millions are coming together to, to get together. They're, they're, they're competing together on the road of path. And, and Romans actually began to, have, has, has built the roads over. Now they're, they're structured streets. They're not dirt roads. They're, they're, they're roads they can walk on. And as Jesus walks along with them, has been teaching and talking, only a few weeks earlier, the last is brought back to life. And now they put them on this path together. And he comes over the, over the bend coming toward the city. As he looks at the city, the Bible says something happens to him. I want you to see the power of the words inside this text. The word here for the idea of incline actually suggests, uh, suggests the sense that he was, he was in such deep agony and pain, the kind of pain the woman had after who came at his feet and began to cry and wipe his feet with the hairs of the head. That's the same word here. It carries the idea he was in such, such pain and agony that he well out. He, he walks over the path. He looks down. He says, is it all? He's in agony. He's distraught. He's in pain. Everybody around him is celebrating. It's a time to celebrate. They, 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 they're excited. He's with us. They're declaring. He's the greatness of God. All the great things are happening, but he does not see what the world around him sees. Looks at the city. He came to his own. And his own did not receive him. <coughs> Could you imagine being the woman? To actually be there and know I, I started this. Imagine the moment that you were in the days of Noah and Noah your dad. No walks in the house, he said, I got some things to go. <laughs> what, what did you got, Dad? Well, the other day I was uh God was talking to me and he told me it's gonna God took your rain. It's gonna what? It's gonna rain. What do you mean by rain? Water's gonna fall from the sky. Dad, uh water doesn't fall from the sky. Right? You ever no 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 no. I'm telling you, God said it's gonna rain. I can see little boy said that. It's going to rain. I say it. <laughs> Therefore, we need to build an ark. By the water? No, no, right here. We need to build an ark, ark right here because God said it's going to rain. So every day, the families out there, boys out there cutting wood, <laughs> building an ark. People come by. What y'all doing? Uh, they're saying, we need to build an ark. Okay. How you doing with that? That's a big boat, man. How you doing that boat to the water, bro? Uh, what you talking about? <laughs> he said, he said, go rain. It's going to rain. He said, go rain. What's rain? Rain is water from the sky. Water don't fall from the sky. I know that. <laughs> I got to to work there. every day. His son's out there working. And you know how people are. I'm sure they talk to the sun. Why? Uh, ain't, you, ain't your daughter there? Yeah. One of the Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear they build this big old boat. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Now tell me why. Look, look, I don't know if they're all the street. <laughs> why they, 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 they do this? Every day they work it. And, and Lord is preaching every day. Change, help us build the love. The end is coming. It's gone. Uh, come on. And no, they were waiting like 
Hi there, hello there, right? Can you tell me? Right? No. <laughs> Every day they wait. Right. right. Another day come. And you 
your education, it means nothing. Look at your friends. Because if they're not with you, what value were you? If you've got family that's lost, what benefit were you? Then you got folks that you love and they will spend their time in eternity suffering and God put you in their life to make sure they have a chance to be saved and you didn't even mention Jesus. What value were you? Preach. Preach. Now look at it. He's still there. He's the forever God who will be there when everything else is gone. Does it break your heart that folk are lost? Tonight, before you leave this building, before you get to your home, you should pick up your car. You got somebody in your car. And tell them, listen, I ain't saying nothing to you, but I want you to know the lost world. I was talking to the other day and I stood up my kids. My kids are all grown. My kids are grown. My, my grandkids are growing up on me. And, and I told them, I said, listen, I don't care how old my kids get, or my grandkids get, or my friends get. If you connected to me, you're going to hear what I mean. <laughs> Church is God's underground warfare 
that he sets here to take over all that belongs to him all over again. He owns everything, but the devil has stolen his subjects. It's our job to retrieve them back by our Lord who we trust and believe in. Right. And once you repent, let's have that change in mind. Then we can get a reason. You'll stand before this audience on this video and declare that your confession is the son of the living God. The confession has a new avenue to it. Our confession, we like the part that's that we want to come out saved. We like that part. Confession says, Lord, I want you to save me. But confession also declares, I want to be my curious. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want to be the one who tells me how to think and what to do and what not to do. If he is your Lord, you must tell somebody about Jesus. If he's your Lord, you must do what he says to you. That's what your confession is. He's my Lord. He tells me what to do. And if you do that, friend, after confessing this Lord, he says, and we'll take you right now to the back of God's house. The Bible says, that believe with the hands and baptize shall be saved. The word and is conjunction. Conjunction, junction with your function. Function, and then junction, it joins quite a bit together. You cannot have one without the other. Believe and be baptized. If you don't have to be baptized, you don't have to believe. Even the devil will be in trouble. That's crazy, right? So you understand that you must be willing to be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and the Lord will add you to his church. Matter of fact, in baptism, we take you to the back of the church and go, and leave you there. This day, you can begin brandly, and God will take you, remold you, he'll add you to the family of God, and make an integral part of what he's trying to achieve to impact the world that you live in. If you're not a Christian, you need to know. But if you're here, and you're part of the family of God, we are not doing it the month of July. You missed this year. You missed six months. What have you said about Jesus in the last six months? Who did you talk to? Who did you reach out to? Who did you pray for? Who are you concerned about? If the answer is not, then maybe he's not your father. Because if he ain't, you don't have to. God has brought you in because this is your opportunity to start all fresh. That's what I love the most about God. Yeah. Every day for Him, He's a brand new day. As far as this concerned, you begin the day, yes, the end exists. You can start over right now, this very moment. And friend, if you need somebody to walk with you, I'll walk with you. I heard. Someone next to you walk with you. But if you know that you need to come, the time is right, and the Lord is always ready. All the folks over here, they love you. They want to see you be what you need to be. If you're in the body of Christ already, we don't want you to be lost. We want you to be saved. This is your chance to move. But it depends on your desire mm -hmm. to give him control and direction over the path of your life. You do it if you trust him. If you trust him right now, and let him bless you. If you're here and you know that you need prayer, come to us in prayer. If you don't request prayer, we don't pray for you because we don't know that you need prayer. Come with questions, we're going to pray for you because the Bible says the third picture of prayers of the righteous will accomplish them. I declare to you, we've got enough righteous folk in here to get some prayers for you. If you have a need right now to connect better with God, you can make your request known. If you never had to ask for prayer in your life, you've been lying. You know that you need prayer. I challenge you to come right now.